a very good evening to one and all present here. Respected Sunil sir and all the esteemed principal, I, Ishita Tulani, CRM manager of EdSmart organization and moderator for today's evening, feel deeply honored as well as privileged to present here today and welcoming you all here. I appreciate this idea of uh, good ed global edu leaders met from Jammu, which creates a special bonding between all the esteemed principals. Kindly allow me to express my gratitude towards each and every one of you present here for sparing some time to be with us all. We know that it takes a lot to take some time out of your busy schedule and coming over here, and especially when it's the time of festival. But I believe that the experiences of uh, this evening, which you all will take home, will be worth the time you have spent. So now, let me give a short highlight of this platform. Global Edu Leader is a network of experts from the various fields connecting each other for exchanging innovative, creative and unique ideas and strategies for developing a sustainable educational system for 21st century digitally smart goal. The Global Edu Leaders Forum is a global campaign for facilitation, health, education and entertainment through a collaborative effort to inculcate value and stability in life. Global Edu Leaders Forum offers a high quality program of health, international education and entertainment, which share a powerful vision for overall grooming of a child into a responsible and a happy citizen. So now, let me give a short profile of the founder of this wonderful platform. Mr. S.K. Singh, sir, is the founder and patron of Global Edu Leaders Forum. He is the concept designer of this worldwide forum. Mr. Singh is a renowned educationist, a visionary leader, and a dynamic personality. And now, before moving further, I would like to put up one quote in front of you all. I can do things you cannot. You can do things I cannot. Together, we can do great things. A line by great Mother Teresa. And do we know or uh, do anyone know here in uh, between all of these why I quoted this line? So let me tell you, there is one reason behind that. As I feel privileged to announce this in front of you all, the dignitary that the two great organizations that the EdSmart and EEL Forum, that is Global Edu Leaders Forum, have now joined up their hands to bring a great revolution in the society. For this, I would like to call up SK Singh, sir, to share something in front of all of us. So over to you, SK Singh, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is my family, Ishita, uh, where I have grown up. So I'm not visionary. They are the visionary people, those who have given me thoughts, idea of sharing and learning. Uh, indeed, it is a very happy moment uh, for me to have you, Mehta sir, uh, Rohini ma'am, Rikesh, Kaur ma'am, Kunal, Rajesh sir, Deep Khare sir, they are all my elders one, those who keep guiding me. Uh, today is Astami and uh, today is the first episode, uh, which is the collaboration with Ed Smart. Ed Smart is my digital partner who will be taking this. And the two topic as uh, Gel is uh, on process of uh, associating with United Nations where we will be doing the students welfare program of education. Uh, indeed, it is a very happy moment, the document which we are going to talk about, module 4 of health, wellness, 
of school going children which is going to be implemented uh, from 2023 session uh, 10th of uh, last month there was a training uh, which was organized so our speakers uh, will be highlighting different topic what is my mission especially for the cbsc school that this forum we can utilize to take our mission forward globally and that's why the name of forum is global edu leaders forum so edu leaders of india can put their mark footprints on the global arena this was uh, my vision where i have uh, my start from mata vaishno devi uh, place jammu and that is my karm bhumi and uh, of course that is uh, i was blessed by you all my kids uh, my real uh, time of 6 years of life so my heartfelt gratitude uh, to all speakers those who are going to talk on module 4 of health and wellness of school going children puneet will take lead on questionnaire she has prepared something this program is on record and which is going to be uh, uh send uh, to the united nation as part of our initiative which is the global campaign for cbsc schools of india so as we know cbsc schools has already been associated with uh, unesco for health and wellness of school going children once again uh, my heartfelt gratitude and welcome to all my seniors all my juniors and all my viewers of jammu and my sweet sister puneet i think i may have a honor to take further over to you puneet thank you sir thank you and uh, welcome everyone to this platform of gel leader forum as uh, we are aware that uh, cbsc is uh, pursuing with nep and uh, health and wellness of the school going children is an important aspect of this so under that we are taking a uh, value and responsible citizenship which is module 4 of that uh, document as we all know that uh, being a responsible citizenship Uh, teaches students and is important factor in developing a country's identity and uh, civic awareness that can lead to political social and economic stability of the country and today uh, we here we are going to focus the basic idea behind the today topic is to reflect that what uh, constitutes values and how we can align them with constitutional values for creating responsible and decision making citizens of india so taking furthermore i now request rohini aima ma'am to start with because she is the master trainer from uh, j and k and uh, first master trainer who is going to train all the cbsc school leaders and teachers in this era so i request her to uh, highlight the brief about the values and responsible citizen and uh, what a, uh, is the aim of cbsc behind it so over to you rohini ma'am thank you so much puneet ma'am first of all greetings to each one of you present here this evening and i am really grateful to jel for giving me this opportunity to speak on the topic values and responsible citizens see all of us are educators and uh, i am sure each one of us are doing wonders with the students because they are the people for whom we all are responsible for so first of all let's understand that values as a term is that each one of us have some kind of some set of values within us they are you know acquired or they are learned from the family values from the schools from the peers and from the society overall but how we utilize and how we take our decisions again depends upon our values because our behavior is always guided by our values so whenever we are acting for something or we are taking certain decisions in life they reflect some how are somewhere our values that are deep rooted in us so we as educators i feel in this forum i would like to say that we as educator need to help 
the learners to reflect upon the values that are within them, which can be utilized as they are, or if they need certain corrections somewhere, we can intervene on those areas. So first of all, what we need to do is, we must recognize the values that influence their decisions and actions in the school. For the students, it is also important as educator, we need to understand and guide them to balance and negotiate between their personal values as well as civic values if we want to be responsible citizens. This is another thing. For example, I'll just quote very normal and day-to-day uh, -day examples. If some children are cheating, suppose in the papers, so we need to understand whether the cheating was being done under the pressure of, of certain kind of, you know, uh, producing the results, or it is not done by certain students because there are certain rules in the school that they might, uh, you know, get restricted. Or if a person is not cheating, it is because of the integrity or the values the person has. So there is a difference. So we need to understand and negotiate with the children that how and what kind of values they are possessing, where we need to intervene with them. Very common example all of us face when our children are moving from class 10 to class 11, when they have to choose the subjects. I think all of us face this problem that some children, they want uh, non-medical, some want medical, some want to, you know, take on commerce. But if there is a child who wants to say, just want to say um, arts subjects, and in the particular school, if the child is not studying and they do not have the uh, subjects arts, then what is the choice? The child has to move to other school, right? But at times the child is confused whether he would like to change the school or he would, you know, compromise on picking up the subject which is not his, you know, passion for. So there again, the values play a critical role. It can be family values, which are superimposed on the children that no, you have to study commerce or you, you have to study sciences. So there also we need to understand as an educator for we need to be there for the child and we need to guide the child to go in for what he's aspiring for, what he wants to be. This is uh, just the common example I gave you, where we as educators can intervene. Now comes the responsible citizenship. See again, the reflection of our actions is guided by the values. Many of us, we go to, you know, areas, suppose there is a gathering. I'll just, uh, you know, give you many of the examples only rather than sticking to the I can say the de definitions of this. See, as responsible citizens, we are all educated. But when we visit certain gatherings, say I'll take an example in a wedding function, many people who are present, they are, they're all educated, they are all well-placed people. But what we notice, we are eating, we are throwing away the things out of the dustbin all over the place, places are you know just littered around. Now here, I can't say that if you go to the area where people are less educated, it will be there and where people are educated, it will not be there. You see in each and every place littering is done. Now, what is that? That is not a responsible citizenship. So these are certain very common examples which we can pick up and guide our students that not to behave irresponsibly. If you see, we as humans and we the people of this country, we do talk about constitutional values, right? But I'm sorry to say many of us fail to talk about constitutional, uh, we talk about right, uh, constitutional rights, but we do not talk about duties. We fail to talk about duties. You see why this kind of, uh, you know, every day we see the situation, roadblocks, people are sitting on dharna here and there. Because we demand so many things that country should be doing for them. These are our, our rights. Every one of us understand these are our rights. Do we understand the duties also? Because rights are again parallel to our duties. 
Many of us fail to do our duties. Am I responsible for certain action that has created this kind of problem? But what we think, it's not for me. I alone cannot do this. You see, what the mass is doing, we should be following that mass. Why not? Even if one person takes the lead, maybe it will not influence 100 people. Maybe one of your action influences just one person. That one person can again influence one person. So why not we make a chain of this kind of behavior, which is responsible behavior, which is for the welfare of the people, for the welfare of your own self, and ultimately for the welfare of the society and the country at large. So in the end, I would just like to say that we need to have that, you know, combination of duties and rights. And unless we, you know, integrate in our education system, we give common live examples to our students about these things, we cannot become responsible citizens. And if we are not responsible citizens, we cannot have a way the where we are, you know, aspiring to be superpower for this country, we cannot be that power unless we as human beings, as inhabitants of this country, take on these responsibilities. That's my say about it. Thank you. Thank so you so much. It was wonderful hearing to you, ma'am. Really enlightening. It is like learning, uh, giving live examples to the students and making them not only to realize what are their rights, but also we need to ensure that they reflect upon what are their duties and uh, well uh, said then only we will be able to create the true citizenship uh, true citizens of india thank you so much rohini ma'am now uh, i will come to rajesh sir rajesh rathod sir uh, sir my question to you is that uh, we know that every individual carries its own values based on many factors like family friends peers and many other uh, environment in which the an individual survives. And we know that these values influence decision making. So my question is, in real life situation or in real life dilemmas, where any times while making any decision, we are in dilemmas, how to make students realize that the decisions are influenced by values, actually? Thank you very much, Puneet ma'am. Wonderful question. And I extend my gratitude to Global Edu Leaders Forum for giving us this wonderful opportunity to discuss at length such an important topic today. Uh, and uh, we've been given opportunity to share our, you know, this opinion on these important topics. Uh, so regarding your questions, I would like to say, yes, it's very important. Uh, I feel, first of all, there must be many role models because it is what children coming to me and saying, he said, whatever is given in the books, whatever is being said by teachers, but hardly, you know, like seen in the society. Sir, where are the role models? They ask, you know, like so you take any walk of life, whether it be politics or be bureaucracy or be day-to-day -day life, role models are in dearth. There is complete dearth. So that way, so it's always my appeal to all the adults and all to look into that each one should be a role model. And I always, because these points are very important. Points are important because even adults should not be just the preachers, but practitioners. It's easy to teach 20 disciples, but it's very difficult to be one of them. And if we really take care, if adults take care that, yes, whatever we are preaching, we are following. So that's very important. So value system is very important. Children should be inculcated from the beginning. That's the reason we always say that uh, catch them young. Habit formation is something very important because habits form the value system of an individual. If children are given the right habits from the beginning, if children are given the right kind of environment, ambience by which they understand that one has to be very regular. Regularity is a challenge these days. Punctuality is a very big challenge. Even adults, 
so called even people with very important positions you know the people have to report at any point of time maybe 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the evening people take it very lightly coolly and as and when you know this things permit so that way so value system can be put in place only when right kind of environment is created from the beginning so right from pre primary classes children are given the right kind of environment and it should continue till the primary middle secondary and senior secondary classes so it's a kind of it complete journey so this journey is very important value system that is again very important so first of all there should be a strong value system to be created and the value system will be there only when people they follow the value system which they talk about so and at the same time i know that there are so many negative forces in the society and at times i really feel wonder the kind of schools and all the teachers they evolve a system very nicely over the period of time and children are also groomed for 15 years but once they part, pass out from the school portals maybe after 3 years of graduation when they visit the school many children are changed completely because negative forces are very strong so maybe the kind of mindset the kind of uh, thought processing that undergoes you know the change so schools shoulder a big responsibility today all the teachers will have to really ensure that they put up you know things in such a way they also behave in such a way they should create that atmosphere you know like in the classrooms or of the classroom in such a way that yes children also understand and believe that one has to be very very real and genuine all the time because in today's world of hypocrisy reality is different from projections and mostly there are projections so how to strike a balance between reality and projections that's very important and i think parents teachers and elders they'll have to rise up to the occasion and they should be we should be the real role models only then we can believe that children will follow their seniors and they'll develop a very strong value system and this value system will find manifestation through their deeds any walk of life so i feel uh, it's a huge huge challenge and first of all adults and elders and all i should really this refine their behavior and only then we can expect children you know this to follow suit thank you very much Uh, thank you sir thank you so much so we need to inculcate the right values and ultimately the right decision will be taken by the children very true very well said now my next question is to mehta sir good good evening mehta sir am i audible sir unmute unmute yourself please question okay good evening yes. good, good evening, evening good evening good evening sir uh, we know that uh, our values and decisions get reflected in our action and our in actions also impact our environment so uh, i would like to know how knowledge about value influences our action can make students understand that they can contribute towards creating better society <coughs> as uh, two speakers have well said they have uh, spoken they have given the examples and these uh, values and uh, i can say that values and responsibilities go side by side if any person who is a responsible person and he is sitting on helm of affairs whether it is institution it is a government it is any anywhere that depends upon that institution that curriculum that framework that content what type of values we are going to inculcate among the students and values are not only by teaching values can be reflected by involving students in various activities as i was uh, going through uh, two days back 
one of the book of uh, moral values, value education in class fourth or fifth. I read one story there that there is one family, they are going to drop their two kids in a school and uh, one more family is there also having two kids. They are going to school. One day, one of the family, their car was not in working order. It was uh, in the workshop. They request that family, can you please today help us by taking our kids uh, pick and drop in school? And they agreed. Then both of them decided that four kids are going in two cars. Why not to club these two and uh, uh, send them in one car? We can save fuel. We can save time. We can um, create. We can help uh, in uh, saving in this uh, controlling the pollution. So these are small things, but it values a lot. So by involving students in small small uh, activities by not only teaching values in class, but by making them experience these values, whether it is school, whether it is home, whether it is any institution of the society. When we go to Gurdwara, we go to Mandir, we go to church, we go to any religious place. We, we are going there fully preparing ourselves. Are we in a position to enter into that uh, religious place? It means we have been taught by our parents and we have seen these things that our elders are doing all these things. So this responsibility is on, first of all, school, uh, home. Home is the first school, then school, then these, our social institutions, our leaders, right, our leaders, whether they are spiritual leaders, they are social leaders, they are educational leaders, whosoever are these, when they are giving, when they are inculcating values, they are um, um, discussing, they are interacting with the public on various issues, like a leader. He's telling, we must love our country, we must be honest, we have to make our country number one, number two, or we have to take lead in the world. People, they laugh. They are taking leaders that they are just giving speech, not doing anything practically. I have seen in last in my age when any teacher so they don't believe what leaders are saying because image of the leaders they have now not bring when leaders in other countries they say something it values it is on record it is an order a president of USA or president of any other country they are saying something it means it's a, it is an order. It is on record. So they have to do that. So what in our country we have seen now, just we have seen uh, the, these past four, seven, eight years. Now things are changing. Now leaders, they have, because of this digitalization, because of awareness, because of right to information, because of and of more things, because we have seen that responsibilities. So we, if we are going to take the responsibility as principal, I am taking responsibility of all students of my school. I am fully involved. What we have written on our curriculum, what we have written on our school diaries, are we following these? Our students, they see, they are watching each and everything. If we are writing something, doing something, you see, Every day, media is so active now. They are um, putting on record, on media, on news, whether this is happening in this school, this is happening in that school, this is happening. Their parents are worried. Everybody is worried because we are now diverting from these responsibilities. When anybody is opening a school, whether it is a government school, it is a public school, it is a charitable school, so there are certain responsibilities on these management, on these school, on these leaders. But we are not going as per the rules and regulations. So if I am a teacher, I am teaching in a class, whatever. If now you see a parent will say to a student that this question you have to do like this. They will say, no, my teacher has taught me two plus three is nine. He will write two plus three is nine. Parent is saying, no, two plus three is five. He will not believe 
the parents, he will say, no, my teacher says. So this is the image of teacher. So when child is in class two, three, four, after that, we have to keep that image same. We have to, that it, if teacher says anything, that is Bible, that is a rule, that is the benchmark for that student. So we are in a school and we are inculcating values. Now we are doing these values. Practically, we are involving students. Okay, road safety week is today there. Health awareness is there. Um, then um, sharing and caring. When they are having their old books, they are donating these books, their uniform. They are not celebrating birthday in their home. They are going to some uh, areas where they are living in the slum area where they don't know what are what is education. They are helping those kids in educating them. So these are there are so many responsibilities. It is an uh, endless topic. We can debate on this. We can write books on this. So the thing is that there are the institutions, home, school, peer group, society. We have all to work together to make our country uh, this uh, corruption free. Intelligent people are there. Honest people are there. Hardworking people are there. They are working for the country. Our country is first, then comes any other thing. If anybody will say, so rules and regulations, if we follow, you see so many leaders, so many very uh, big, uh, these uh, bureaucrats, police is arresting them, hundreds of cases are there, corruption, thousands of crores of rupee is being recovered from the, from the houses of these bureaucrats, these commissioners, secretaries, leaders, and the students have they whatever we say them they are saying no sir this is not happening only people who are very honest who are working on ground they are teachers they are army officers they are police personnel rest of the people they don't believe they are saying no sir so we have to uh, change this entire society by only revolution will be there in any country for betterment for upliftment, if we educate them in a proper way, we educate them in a in in under the framework of the curriculum, which helps our country to grow. So I am thankful to my uh, friend S K. Doctor S K. for um, for, for um, this uh, making this global educate leaders form and involving so many good leaders, good speakers, like Mr. Rathor, Roini Emma ma'am, Vokesh ma'am, my uh, dear Kunal, who has been my student, and I'm very happy whenever he speaks. Now you will see, he will bring so many things um, um, in this domain that uh, everybody will be happy to listen to Kunal. So Puneet also, Puneet is um, youngest principal of Army Public Schools, there is chain of 137 schools all over India. And Puneet is the youngest principal. So thank you very much. All the best to all the leaders. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, yes, creating uh, right values will create right citizens. And uh, we together can make students to have a pledge for a better society. Thank you so much, Mehta, sir. Now, again, uh, coming to Kunal, sir. Uh, we know that decision making and values now, as we have heard from uh, my leaders, that it goes side by side. So, what is the value based decision making, and what all steps can we consider while arriving at a decision which we have to teach to our students? So, you are uh, highlighted in light your reflection on this topic, sir. Please. You have to increase your voice, I think. Sorry. Am I better now? Am I audible now? Barely so better. So once again, thank you, SK Sir and the Jell Foundation for giving me an opportunity to be among the best of educationists of Jammu. Uh, it's a privilege for me to speak on this forum where my own teachers, my seniors, my mentors are there. So thank you so much. 
for this opportunity coming to the topic which is about uh, decision making a value based decision making well if it had been a you know a, a, a mba class or a economics class it would have been very easy for me to answer this question because i have a formula a formula you apply that formula if you're getting the right value out of that decision that decision becomes right but here we are talking about value as in the set which we have already been described greatly by our thought sir mehta sir and rohini i am a ma'am kunal uh, 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 little bit uh, uh, audio uh, audio is audio is clear but slow slow yes yeah, slow sir slow uh, probably i can kunal you are audio is slow either he use earphone kunal you can move to the next speaker i'll fix it up uh, kunal sir we will come back to you after you fix your vikesh ma'am coming to you okay jaggi uh, just a minute yes vikesh ma'am we know that uh, nep is highlighting and always uh, talking about inclusive education inclusivity it's a, a part and parcel of national education policy 2020 so uh, inclusivity and acceptance are part of are inseparable part of becoming an active citizen the best speaker like we have to take you know, both you together that is uh, mehta sir please unmute your uh, mute yourself sir please so we have uh, to under make our students understand that inclusivity and acceptance is part and parcel of becoming a uh, active citizen so i would like you to highlight few points regarding how we can sensitize our students about it ma'am please thank you puneet ma'am uh, blissful greetings to everyone and uh, my generous gratitude to gel forum for giving me this opportunity to talk about this particular topic uh, since we are talking about becoming active citizens so at the outset i would like to begin with active citizenship only active citizenship is all about being a responsible member of a community society okay. and institution or the nation so such kind of citizenship is practiced my dear friends not by words but by deeds of mutual respect listening to different opinions working together despite the differences in language religion caste race or even abilities and skills basically education is seen as a key means for supporting active citizenship along with equal and equitable opportunities and social cohesion so before talking about the topic of inclusivity and acceptance as the inseparable part of becoming active citizen i would like to mention here that inclusivity or acceptance here does not only mean the differently abled children termed as cwsn in our uh, cbsc terminology but also the ones with behavioral emotional or social issues of being staying isolated i just still remember when i was a college student in one of uh, my subject the first line of the book was man is a social animal so dear friends it's a, it's it is not a, you know a lie it's a proven fact and absolutely true because belonging is a strong need of all humans it is only through connection with others that we thrive and flourish being isolated or excluded really hurts and we all feel it inside irrespective of the fact whether the exclusion is intentional or accidental for some students in the school it can really be hard to build social capital and find valued membership in the social community so we need to be proactive in creating community of includers and a culture of inclusion in which all the students feel a sense of belonging but friends this kind of scenario must not be an imposed or forced one rather it should be a natural phenomenon remember it's not enough for us the educators or the school to teach the students what not to do but schools must teach them what to do to promote kindness compassion and inclusion among their peers 
I have chalked out few points which can be implemented in a school to encourage students to be inclusive. My first point is talking about unintentional exclusion to encourage empathy. We need to teach students and teachers to be aware of their own actions, keeping in view how would they feel if they are confronted with some particular situations. For example, if a student is always the last one to be selected for a competition or for a tournament, or even sometimes not selected, definitely his or her performance will not be up to the mark or even it will deteriorate because of the feeling of being unwanted and unwelcomed. Similarly, if we choose to go to a museum for an excursion which has a lot of stairs to climb, a student with a walking frame would not like this idea. This is called unintentional exclusion. My second point says, draw on experiences. This means that all the students must be told to remember their own experiences when they were confronted with some awkward situations where they felt isolated or excluded. So there must have been somebody who included them, who welcomed them, who understood their situation. And now because of that somebody, they are part of a group and are working being an active citizen. Such memories of theirs would definitely enhance or evolve empathy inside them to become a support for someone who is in dire need of this. My third point says teaching to look out for others. As a school, we must try to have a community of includers who are responsible to look out for loners who need a friend or who are left out or those who are simply too shy to reach out. They can be told to begin up with a normal conversation which will equip the other person with a feeling of absolute contentment. My next point says teaching friendly invitations. After we have scanned those loners or left outs from peers, we have to seek them out with friendly invitation. For example, that this community of includers, they can always say, come and join us. There's a lot of room for you. Do you want to join us for lunch? Do you like football? Please join our team, things like that. My next point says, provide opportunities for connections. As a school, we need to create abundant opportunities which ultimately lead to building connections. For example, friendship seats or a system of buddies. Mixing up students by making learning partners or learning groups, by setting up social clubs, by giving students an inclusion role, by an activity where everyone has to write one thing about every classmate that they like or admire about. This is how we will encourage all to make connections, especially for those who feel isolated, bullied, or are struggling to make friends. My next point is encourage kindness. A study with nine to 11 years old students found that the group of students who were asked to perform the acts of kindness showed higher level of happiness, greater acceptance from their peers and more friendship in the classroom. So there are large benefits of being kind and compassionate. We have noticed that kids generally get a mistake but they don't always get positive feedback for the acts of kindness and compassion. We as a school must ensure that the recognition is not only for academic achievements, but also for the acts of inclusion and pro-social behavior. My next point is teach the difference between cliques and friendship. We need to make the children aware of the thin line of difference between having cliques or having friendship, which ultimately lead to the consequences of exclusion. Cliques are the close-knit groups that clearly communicate to the other person, you are not welcome or you are not as good as we are. So we need to talk about the impact of inclusion to have a clique-free friendship, to learn social skills like conversation skill, like listening skill, like playing fair, like accepting others and conflict resolutions. I'll conclude my point by saying definitely we are going to face many challenges and obstacles while adapting to these initiatives. But we must remember 
when capacity to understand such obstacles in self and in society are nurtured and strengthened, the practice of active citizenship gains energy and zeal. So we basically need the democratization of the classrooms because there are a lot of discrepancies between the methods of formal education and the students' lived realities. We need to encourage experiential learning while involving all. Along with knowledge and skills, it is crucial for all of us to encourage learners to acquire values and attitudes that will lead to more peaceful, inclusive, and sustainable society. So because in an increasingly interconnected and interdependent world, there is a need for everyone to work together to be informed, engaged, and empathetic citizens to promote social transformation. So that's all from my side. Thank you for the patient learning, listening. Thank you so much. Puneet, unmute. So many examples, ma'am, you have given and uh, really it was wonderful hearing you and uh, great learning from your side, ma'am. And now we can, we can say that it is very important uh, to sensitize our students uh, around uh, what all is around them and how they have to reflect on and how they have to empathize. Kunal, sir, I hope you are ready with uh, your uh, um, answer. So shall I come back to you, sir? Yes, sir, you are audible. I hope everyone can give me thumbs up. If Kunal, sir, he is audible to everyone. So, Kunal, sir. Sir, you are brief on the steps to be considered while arriving at a decision, sir. So, uh, thank you once again. I will not repeat the whole uh -huh, uh -huh. It's already there. There is some issue. Kunal, is some issue with you. Audio is... Sir, you just uh, hold your mic a uh, little, yes, close. Still vol uh, volume is, sir, uh, I will uh, then. Uh, 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 sir, I will suggest that you can use, you know, mobile. I think that would be the best thing, right? Okay. Uh, meanwhile, so, I will. Uh, we want to just, you know, hear your magic. <laughs> yes, sir. That is very important, sir. So meanwhile, yeah. I will go back to Deep Kare, sir. And, uh, uh, and Kunal, sir. Please come back soon. Uh, so, sir, uh, we know that uh, it is important for us to inculcate values in the students because their values, they get reflected with their action, their values impact their decision making, their values uh, make them uh, to empathize with the students around them. And uh, we know just as uh, Rohini ma'am, she's uh, in her, one of her examples, she's uh, quoted about the food waste and other waste, uh, which we see in, not only in uneducated people, but educated people also around us. They waste water, they waste electricity, they waste uh, food. So uh, I would like to know from you, sir, how to harmonize behavior of students with civic value and how students can be made responsible, concerned, and capable citizens, sir. Please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I always have a little different uh, thing to say. I am not of the party to feel that we have to make them citizens. They are the citizens already. We cannot wait for them to, okay, your turn will come, then you start taking decisions and show the behavior which is right apt as per the constitution or as per the family or as per the society. They are the part of everything as of now. They may be in nursery, or they may be in 12th class or beyond. This is what I see. The children cannot be given lessons of value or citizenships or responsibility. They have to be just informed about their daily behavior, behavioral attitude, attitude, and incident that they are as per the requirement and you are going to make a great thing. For that, we don't have to wait and they keep on giving lectures or lessons and 
you know, we prepare them for such kind of behavior. No, they all are behaving around the clock. We only need to have some time to look at that. We all are busy. I'm sorry, as my just a personal say, view, we all are very busy to prepare them for some day when they start behaving well. All right. And they are all led to practice, which is unrequired behavior. Because we are not having time to look at their normal daily routine behaviors, which has to be required nudging, guiding, guidance, or what you call it. As a teacher, I remember when I first had the GBM of Jammu Sahodia, I, Mrs. S. K. Singh was there and he asked me, what the hell do you do? So I just told one sentence that I create common sense by trying to teach physics. And if somebody has common sense, he has everything which you are trying to talk about. I've been saying in all writings and webinars that we somehow in the last two, three years become very busy in creating new, new words, basically. We're busy creating jargon. We are creating, we are busy creating clutter into the syllabus of the child. I will never talk about a word value in the life of the child. I will represent my own character as the biggest responsible, uh, biggest possible, you know, uh, motivating thing for the children. They need not to know the, what is truth and uh, what is lies. They should know there's only one thing in the world which is truth because they hear that all around. We need not to, you know, differentiate. We not, need not to worry about anything. We have to represent our best side. And we appreciate the best side of each side. But it is a very mammoth task. We are so busy in so many so-called other things. No, 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 put a very important point, but I have a different point of view about it. If an educated person does not know how to use food and water, I think we, we should kill in the education. Why do you expect? An educated person will only behave nicely. I've seen millions of the people who are not educated behave better. So it is time to, you know, challenge the education and not to add one more chapter in the book of the child care. You have to learn values also. We failed miserably in the name of educating people. Because we're educating them science, math, and physics. How, how often we have talked about the real education? Today was 2nd October, sometimes somebody uh, proposed going on. A child was reading a sentence. As per Mahatma Gandhi, the real education is building character and making children aware of the responsibility. It was in Hindi. Ask in the class, anybody know what is the meaning of bodh? Kartavika bodh. It was a pin drop silence. And everybody will write this answer in the exam. Kartavika bodh. The teacher may not be knowing at time. Character building. Who knows what is character, by the way? In which mark sheet are we marking character? I'm very, very sorry. We have to change education. If you keep on putting icing on a cake, which is rotten from inside, you will look good. But once it is cut, it will fill the room with something which you can't afford it. And which we are already feeling the smell of it all around. So my humble request to all everyone is, let us link the so-called education with daily life. A child has to behave on daily basis, which represents values in him. A teacher, a class four, a driver, or Aya has to show a behavior on daily basis round the clock. Then we have the meaning in this kind of webinar and idea of Ellie's and I would say citizenship. Somebody said very rightly that there's the a dearth of good people. And we have to think why it is so. How bad people are surviving? Is it not a big question? How there are people who are making mistakes on daily basis? And we, they are in position. Mr. Uh, SK of Sahib also, Casey Mathas also brought this into the picture that it's a hell of a lot of corruption. People are surviving. The child will be naturally attracted to that. Why would they look at a poor principal? He has no power. He only can be honest himself, but he can't change the system. <laughs> Please understand. So we have to do something which is on daily basis and with concern to each child. We have to, you know, support every child's good deed. And as you talked about, we can aside, leave aside the teaching of mathematics and science for two days and we can work on that. Then I think what we look forward is possible. Otherwise, we'll keep on completing syllabus and we have going to have a great mark sheet. But naturally, when you talk about values, you will not find any leftover. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It is always uh, really uh, reflective to hear from you, sir. Thank you so much.
inculcating value is reflecting values thank you so much sir kunal sir i hope i am audible now yes sir yes finally thundering audible thundering. clear and loud <laughs> clear and loud finally thank you rajesh sir for that advice so i will not last ask punit ma'am to repeat the question because it has been repeated <laughs> twice so i get a hat trick of questions everybody answered one i am going to answer the hat trick of questions now <laughs> the question remains the same the decision making and the problem solving now when everyone has deliberated already upon the value the value system the inculcation of value the system what we are following and the system we need to be in so absolutely apt as uh, as said by the great speakers and educators already on this forum now my question is a little different from about what is decision making and how it helps in problem solving when it comes to value system values as very aptly said by the speakers is something which is there inherent from the family a few from the schools the teacher the neighborhood the friends around you the company you are in all these things add to the value set of yours what kind of values are you looking at of course family values would be there a value based value based education system which we are talking about probably we are not imparting it the same way it should be but yes that set of system all this together puts in for a child to make a value set and there the child needs to decide and understand i would say what kind of values you would like to be seen as grown up with or the people to reflect on it a student is a very impeccable mind how you are making that student a value based decision making system in him definitely depends upon the educators but at the same time the education system needs a lot of reforms before we actually come to a conclusion of imparting such values incubating such values and then taking these values ahead for these children so that is a different and a much debatable topic where there are different uh, viewpoints but yes as educators we try our best what best we can do to our children what we can do to the system and what we can do in our schools and as these edu leaders we are already doing much we can about getting these things over here now when we speak specifically about decision making we think it's a very easy task decision making is nothing to do okay fine yes or no the decision is made take it now given the decision is made it's not like that when you are looking at a decision making system the problem needs to be the nucleus of that prop thing and then the set of values probably what are your feelings toward that particular uh, problem what could be the consequences of your decisions what are the influencing factors which are affecting you to take that decision how are you calculating and coming to a conclusion about that particular problem so the problem becomes the nucleus here now the problem is the centroid when you put that problem in the middle there it becomes a little easy for you to understand that problem of course empathy is empathy always needs to be there before we actually put on any kind of value system in our, in our children or taking a decision now when that well problem is seen first of all reflect that problem from your feeling how do you feel about that problem and it is not that only as educators teachers or principals we can take a decision at time children come to you with beautiful and easy decisions easy working on their stuff and if the liberty is given to the students to decide i am telling you friends they can create wonders for us and we can just even think what where they can go and what kind of decisions they can take i will take a real life example here recently concluded jodhmal youth conclave isn't that something where the value system the decision making the consequences of your values each and every point is reflected and that too from the students when they are sitting in those discussions when they are sitting in those committee rooms if we can actually see the quantum of decisions they are coming out with the children are the chairs they are the co chairs they are the rap chairs they are the they are the ones who are you know deciding factors about others also how they are performing i guess that is where the set of value system comes in from education we have given that independence to our students we have made our children so strong that today they can take a decision for others also 
so consequences feelings all these things are put together if i'm taking a decision i have to be sure about the consequence of that decision and i should have the courage of taking the onus of my decision i guess this is what is need to be taught to our children today let them take the onus of what what they are taking a decision probably right or wrong that is a second phase of looking at it we all talk about swot analysis we all do our own swot analysis strength weakness opportunity threat when we are doing that why don't we give that to our children that's a simple exercise i think we all must inculcate into our classrooms that why can't we just put this four step every child can do it after every six months it will be very easy for them to identify the problem because they know what are the opportunities and threats associated with it they know what are their strengths and weaknesses while they are taking this decision so decision making automatically will set in and the value system will be there in the structure once we give the onus to our children to take a decision we always we always are afraid you know even we have been brought up like this in our family also the family head takes a decision it's always the family head who is taking the decision we all need to follow it blindly and uh, we are not saying that they are taking a wrong decision it's that the things have changed we have a different perspective towards that decision so probably you know i'll go to a very basic example nowadays all this religious and the programs are going on so the navratras are going on so for me a navratra festival would be uh, probably more of fun where you can have go to temples have dand playing dandiya having you know fun and all for uh, for probably for my wife it is a very religious festival where she has to and you know been uh, praying all the time for all these six seven days for uh, for somebody it would be like a burden of oh, shit now you don't have you know you're not allowed to take non veg you're not allowed to go out uh, that frequently with friends you know you have a lot of restrictions so everybody has their own way of looking at the things so let us give that onus to our children the value set is there because as educators as institutions as schools you are imparting that thing how much they are taking is definitely their piece of cake so that cake when we cut down that cake what uh, deep sir very correctly said which is a rotten cake from inside there is no point of icing that cake because once you'll cut it it will come out with that foul smell that will just take away things out of you so let us give that onus to our children let them understand the problem problem from the nucleus being a nucleus and around them let them just make sure that they are correctly looking at the feelings the consequences what all needs to be taken the empathetic and sympathetic approach towards that problem and then their decision should be respected so i guess that would be my call on uh, decision making and problem solving amazing sir wonderful wonderful hearing to you sir actually let us make students responsible for their decisions and then only they will have a swot analysis of their decisions and they can learn thank you so much and uh, values and behavior guided by values should be their own decision and uh, not only the schools but everybody around student is responsible and being leaders in the school we have to reflect best of our values and ensure that best of the values are uh, taken out from the students and teacher reflect their best of their values and each and every uh, person who makes environment around the child imbibe good values and reflect good values so thank you so much for uh, all and it was really wonderful session and uh, i think that uh, module of value and responsible citizen citizenship has uh, come up with nice decisions nice reflections and enlightenments and thank you everybody for being here now over to sk singh sir founder jail thank you so much everyone for joining this event sir thank you thank you puneet uh, i am speechless because now there is nothing left which i can talk about it is uh, indeed a very happy moment on uh, astmi because i keep thinking this thought process was you know 3 years back came into my mind ki let's do something so only my memorable uh, memory uh, which connects me with you all your positivity uh, i have been uh, serving from 2000 in school education it's been 22 years so 15 years as educator if i say 
sitting on a chair where you make decision, I always think uh, what child is thinking in classroom. So title which I am going to take uh, that it is directly corrected with Rohini ma'am statement and Khare sir statement. The policy to practice is important. Otherwise we keep talking. Kunal was adding uh, the, about the value. A value is a result of choices made after thoughtful consideration of multiple choices. We have many things to do. What we take, what we reflect from society, from parents. I do agree, uh, Khare sir, uh, because usually we are running behind the curriculum examination. And this change and collaboration with the United Nations, UNESCO, is one of the real example which we need to practice. We are actually abstract. Just things are moving and uh, writing, uh, reading answers and writing on the answer sheets. Uh, this uh, module has uh, six activities which is being given. My next step with you all is to take this activities towards the teachers and students and we get the reflections. I'll be working on this. I'm uh, happy okay, I have uh, now my leaders, those who can take this forward. Three modules we will be discussing further in three segments of the state. So Rohini ma'am, uh, Khare sir, uh, Kunal, Rajesh sir, and Vikes ma'am, aap sare log to mere liye khud hi inspiration ho, uh, main aur kuch keha hi nahi sakta. जो मेरी यात्रा मेरी जर्नी और आप लोगों का स्नेह प्यार अगर मेरी वैल्यूज कहें तो मैंने एक्सपीरियंस किया हुआ है मैं आप लोगों से दूर सिर्फ डिस्टेंस पे बैठा हूं ना मेरे मन में ना मेरे भाव में ना ही कभी ये मैं सोच सकता हूं कि आप लोगों के बिना मैं कुछ हूं चाहे हम जहां बैठे हों और शायद इस डिजिटल डिस्टेंस ने एक बड़ी वैल्यू की बात कहता हूं कि अभी अमितेश केम फ्रॉम यूएस तो वो गांव गया तो उसको सबका पैर छूना था अब बीइंग अमेरिकन ही हैज स्लाइटली चेंज तो उसने अब हमारे यहां क्या होता है कि छोटा बड़ा ऐसा कोई कुछ नहीं है तो हमारे जो पूजा में जितने सारे सब वर्कर्स थे कोई खाना बना रहा था कोई आ, सफाई कर रहा था तो उसने वहां से स्टार्ट किया इफ आई से इफ इट वाज एक्सपीरियंस्ड वैल्यू एवरीवन वाज हैप्पी कि लड़का अमेरिका में पढ़ता है तब भी वो मतलब झाड़ू लगाने वाले से सबका पैर छुआ मामला वहां गड़बड़ हुआ जब मैंने शाम को पूछा कि क्या आप सबको पहचान रहे थे तो बोले नहीं पापा आई वाज गेटिंग कंफ्यूज्ड कि मतलब किसका छूना है किसका नहीं कौन बड़ा छोटा ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड पैर छूना अगर प्रवृत्ति है रेस्पेक्टिंग अदर्स तो वाई सम वन इज बिग एंड सम वन इज स्मॉल At last, itna hi kahunga ki in a very short, ki we have been practicing this all from the books and curriculum. Time has changed. This past two years have made us realize that things are beyond the book. And we have to connect each other. We have to share our experience, even smile on the screen. Would be a really great pleasure. Uh, I'm reaching 2020 plus country, just sharing a smile on the screen. Thanks to pandemic, because once uh, one of volunteer Professor Beatrice has taken this lead, ki Global Leader Forum will be registered in UNESCO. So I was trying to just find a link to how we get the activities of UNESCO. The day CBSC declared collaboration with us. Uh, Central Board of Secondary Education on Health. This is the first episode which we are doing in India. Or ek hi baat hai sirf ki safar mein nikal pade hai to musafir kahi sahara kahi samandar bhi aayenge aur yaad rakh teri kamyabiyon ke baad rishte nibhane log tere ghar bhi aayenge. Mujhe is baat ka bada garv hai ki main aap sab ke beech mein raha aur rahta hi rahunga. Ye meri journey aaj se jo suru hui hai जिस दिन ये फोरम यूनाइटेड नेशंस 
का सर्टिफिकेट रिसीव करेगा मुझे लगता है कि हमारी मुस्कुराहट पूर्ण हो पाएगी और माता वैष्णो देवी का वो जगह जिसने मेरे बच्चों को या मेरे परिवार को या मुझे आप लोगों से दूर किया है लेकिन मैं दूर हूं नहीं दिल मेरा वही है और खरे सर मुझे जीबीएम की वो पूरी चीजें याद हैं ये रिकॉर्डिंग पे नहीं जाएगा चूंकि बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें हैं जो मैं कट करके ही डालूंगा और वही मैम मुझे याद है पहला पहला बैच हमारा जम्मू सहोदया का राजेश कुणाल आई थिंक थिंग्स आर विकेश मैम एवरी वन यू आर विद इन मी आई कैन नॉट डिनाई इट इट्स अ सोल प्योर प्रैक्टिस मेहता सर रिकॉर्डिंग पे हम लोग नहीं जाएंगे तो हम सिर्फ इतना ही कहना चाहते हैं कि वो आपकी पहली जीवीएम जो जीडी डी गोयनका में थी फिर बाद में मैं और खरे सर तो हम लोग बातें जो कर रहे थे मुझे लगता है ये टाइम है हम सबके पास एक अपॉर्चुनिटी है विकेश मैम ने मतलब इतना पिन पॉइंटेड नोट डाउन किया होता कि मैं डर गया था बाद में कि भाई अब तो मतलब सो लेट्स टेक दिस जर्नी फॉरवर्ड ये बात यहाँ शुरू नहीं होती है यहाँ मतलब कह सकते हैं कि भी बहुत दूर लेके जाना है इसकी छह एक्सरसाइजेज हैं छोटी छोटी चीजें बीच बीच में मैं थोड़ा पढ़ रहा हूँ तो आप लोगों से शेयर करूंगा कि हाउ वी इंगेज टीचर्स ऑन द वैल्यू हाउ इफ द टीचर्स आर नॉट इंगेज हाउ आर स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू बी इंगेज एंड ट्रस्ट मी कि अगर हम एक लाइफ भी बदल सके मैं तो एक ही की बात कर रहा हूँ तो हम तो स्क्रीन पे सात लोग हैं छह लोग हैं तो जर्नी कभी भी छोटी बड़ी नहीं होती इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ बहुत बहुत आभार और क्लोजिंग कमेंट में चूंकि हम लोग रिकॉर्डिंग पे नहीं है मुझे लगता नहीं हाँ खरे सर बताएं 